This video will illustrate how to properly wear personal protective equipment, or PPE, to protect against illicit drugs, including fentanyl. NIOSH has identified three levels of potential exposure, minimal, moderate, and high. Exposure levels are defined as follows. Minimal exposure situation. Response to a situation where it is suspected that illicit fentanyl or other illicit drugs may be present, but no drugs are visible. In this situation, NIOSH recommends that you wear nitrile gloves. Moderate exposure situation. Response to a situation where small amounts of illicit fentanyl or other illicit drugs are visible. In this situation, NIOSH recommends that you wear nitrile gloves, arm protection, a disposable N, P, or R100 filtering facepiece respirator, or a reusable elastomeric N, P, or R100 respirator, and protective eyewear. High exposure situation. Response to a situation where liquid fentanyl or large amounts of fentanyl products are visible. In this situation, NIOSH recommends responders do not enter the area. Entry into these situations requires additional PPE and training per your department's policy. The following are some general instructions for properly donning, conducting a user seal check, and doffing the two most common types of respirators used to protect against illicit drugs. You should always follow the manufacturer's instructions for the specific respirator model that you are using. A fit test verifies that the respirator fits you correctly. It must be performed before you wear a respirator for the first time and at least yearly after that. You should perform a user seal check each time you don a respirator. A user seal check is a way to verify the respirator is positioned on your face to assure a proper seal. Your department will provide you with a NIOSH approved respirator after completing the required medical clearance, fit testing, and training. As a responder, you can wear glasses, a hat, a body cam that mounts on your hat or around your head, and a radio that may use an earbud. Remove these items and anything else that may come between you and the respirator. There should be nothing under the respirator or the respirator straps that can interfere with the respirator seal. If you have facial hair that comes between the sealing surface of the face piece and your face or that interferes with the valve function, you shouldn't wear the tight-fitting respirators described in this video. Discuss alternative respiratory protection options with your department. The following are general instructions for correctly donning, conducting a user seal check, and doffing a disposable NP or R100 filtering facepiece respirator. Before starting the donning process, inspect the respirator, including the straps, for tears or damage. If you find any damage to the respirator, do not use it. Replace it with a new one. Next, remove anything that may come between you and the respirator. Using one hand, place the respirator on your face with the nose piece at your fingertips, allowing the headbands to hang freely. The nose piece should span and cover the bridge of your nose and the respirator should cup your chin. Pull the bottom strap over your head, resting it around your neck and below your ears and adjust the strap. Pull the top strap over your head and position it high at the back of your head and adjust the strap. When adjusting the straps, be careful not to over tighten the respirator to your face and be sure not to crisscross the straps. Make sure that your mouth and nose are covered by the respirator. If the respirator has a metal nose piece or strip, use both hands to mold the strip to conform to the shape of your nose by pushing inward while moving your fingertips down along both sides of the nose piece. After donning your respirator, carefully replace other items you wear on your head. These items should go on top of your respirator and should not push on the respirator to deform it so they do not interfere with the respirator seal. Next, perform a negative pressure user seal check by placing both hands over the respirator and taking a quick breath in to see if the respirator collapses slightly. 
If you do not feel air leak between your face and the respirator seal, a proper seal has been made. Don the additional PPE that is required, such as your gloves, and proceed with your work. If you feel leakage between your face and the respirator seal, there is not a proper seal. If air leaks around the nose, readjust the nose piece. If air leaks at the mask edges, readjust the straps and reposition the respirator on your face. After readjusting the respirator, you should check the seal again. If you cannot achieve a proper seal due to air leakage, you are not protected and should not enter a hazardous area. See your supervisor to determine the problem. If your respirator accidentally comes off in a hazardous area, exit the area and follow your department's procedures for re-entering. Once you have exited the scene and are in a clean environment, you should remove your PPE as follows. Start by removing your gloves and placing them in a labeled durable 6 mil polyethylene bag. Then remove anything that is on top of your respirator. Next, carefully remove the respirator without touching the front of it as it may be contaminated. Reach behind your head and pull the bottom strap forward followed by the top strap. Place the contaminated single-use respirator in a labeled durable 6 mil polyethylene bag. Dispose of single-use PPE according to your department's procedures. Do not save or reuse the respirator or gloves. After removing your respirator, you should immediately wash your hands before touching other items or yourself. Do not use hand sanitizer. Now, let's explore the general instructions for correctly donning, conducting a user seal check, and doffing a half face piece elastomeric respirator. These are just general instructions. You should always follow the manufacturer's instructions for the specific respirator model that you are using. Before starting the donning process, inspect the respirator including the straps, valves, and gaskets for loose, missing, or damaged parts. If you find any damage to the respirator, repair or replace it. Next, remove anything that may come between you and the respirator. Then, pull the bottom strap over your head. Place the respirator face piece under your chin and over your nose. Pull the head harness over the crown of your head and adjust its placement until it is stable but comfortable. Be sure that the neck strap is flat and smooth against the back of your neck. Adjust the neck strap, but be careful not to over tighten the respirator to your face. After donning your respirator, carefully replace items you wear on your head. These items should go on top of your respirator and should not push on the respirator to deform it, so they do not interfere with the respirator seal. Next, perform a positive pressure user seal check. Place the palm of your hand over the exhalation valve outlet. Exhale gently and hold your breath to create and maintain a slight positive pressure inside the face piece. If the face piece bulges slightly and no air leaks are detected between your face and the face piece, you have passed the positive pressure seal check. If, on the other hand, you detect a face seal leak, readjust the straps and reposition the respirator on your face. After adjusting the respirator, you should check the seal again. Next, perform a negative pressure seal check. Cover the respirator cartridges or filters with the palms of your hands and inhale gently. If you feel the face piece collapse and pull closer to your face with no leaks between your face and the face piece, you have passed the negative pressure seal check. If you detect air leakage, readjust the straps and reposition the respirator on your face. After adjusting the respirator, you should check the seal again. If you cannot achieve a proper seal, you are not protected and should not enter a hazardous area. See your supervisor to determine the problem. If you passed both the positive and negative pressure seal checks, you have a proper seal. Don additional PPE that is required, such as your gloves, and proceed with your work. If your respirator accidentally comes off in a hazardous area, exit the area and follow your department's procedures for re-entering.
once you have exited the scene and are in a clean environment, you should remove your PPE as follows. Start by changing into a clean pair of gloves. This will keep you from becoming contaminated. Now, with the new clean gloves, use your hands to remove anything on top of the respirator. Next, carefully loosen the straps and remove the respirator by grabbing the front of the respirator. Remove the cartridges or filters and place them in a labeled durable 6 mil polyethylene bag. Place the reusable portion of the respirator in a separate labeled durable 6 mil polyethylene bag until it is properly cleaned. Follow your department's procedures for disposing of single-use PPE and maintaining reusable PPE, including proper cleaning, disinfecting, and storage. After removing your respirator, you should immediately wash your hands before touching other items or yourself. Do not use hand sanitizer. Remember, PPE must be used in accordance with OSHA regulations, including the PPE and respiratory protection standards.